as you go, friends, and welcome back to the channel. So, in this video, we're going to be doing a uh, kit review, and we're going to do it on Eddard's new Tempest 2. Now, I know this uh, model has been out for a couple of months already. Um, I finally managed to get myself uh, one of these kits. Looks absolutely uh, amazing, but then again, it's kind of the sort of thing you expect from Eddard anyway. So, Grab yourself a good brew and a bicky and we'll jump straight into it. So let's have a good look at this kit. So we'll start with the uh, instructions. Uh, Ed, I'll do some very nice um, instruction uh, booklets. Uh, really nicely done, nice printed paper. Very nice and clear and easy to see. On the front page, we have um, the information about uh, the aircraft. Um, I've learned quite a bit about some of these because Eddard do, do in, go into a lot of detail um, and research into their models which is something I absolutely love uh, about Eddard. So on to the first page we have um, all our sprues and the stuff that's going to be within the kit. So of course we've got a clear part, our main sprues, um, canopy masks and in the case of this one we've got some other masking in there as well and our photo X detail and as well as the caller call outs that you're potentially going to be needing within this kit so on the front page or well, the first uh, section of the build um is a cockpit uh, layout i know it all goes together obviously um we've also got showing about the uh, position of the photo etch uh, sorry the photo etch uh, belts that are going to go in the position that they need to go into there as well. I'm also going to go out your first sort of decision on how you want to um, do your cockpit so you can either have the option of using the uh, plastic moulder kit, you paint it yourself or you can have uh, the decal uh, version which has got uh, pretty much very limited detail uh, or raised uh, surfaces to say um, within that so your decal can conform over those and Obviously, there's not blank space or flat space for the instruments, or you have uh, your photo etch uh, panel. So basically, you'll have just a couple of blank pieces of plastic to put your uh, instrument panels to, and then obviously glue that into the cockpit. And again, we've got a few areas where it's calling for uh, photo etch parts. So uh, one of the control panels there um, so you've got the you know the main part at the bottom and the uh, controls there um, as well position the seat belts should or the main seat belts uh, should be going into um, and again some more control surface um, down to the left hand side uh, of the cockpit there is a part on this that will uh, call for a, a piece of plastic uh, or styrene uh, rod uh, to attach um, part of the photo etch. Potentially that part might actually have a solid plastic part. I don't know yet because I haven't um, had a proper look. Um, so the potentially may be able for putting the plastic one if you haven't got uh, something like that to replace it with. Now the cockpit is quite well um, assembly wise there's quite a lot of parts to it. Um, you know, you've obviously got the main cockpit, so the floor, um, the seat and the um, rear wall there. And uh, some of the framework uh, either side um, of the cockpit there, which makes up into a small uh, sub-assembly. And of course, then you'll fit your engine, uh, you know, your main uh, fuselage parts. And then again, a few uh, details to go in the side wall of the cockpit as well. So moving on to the wing assembly, we've got some of the uh, wheel bay in there as well, some wheel well um, walls if you like. Um, so it seems quite a simple uh, assembly, obviously you're going to have the main roof of the wing or the lower part of the, no, the roof of the wing, sorry, and three parts to make uh, for the wall. And of course, that's going to be on, on both sides. And then obviously putting the two halves uh, together. There's the radiator to go in on the uh, 
right hand side of the aircraft. And then moving on to put in uh, you know, quite the rear control surface of the tail section. Um, you know, so there's quite a lot of parts to it, but nothing that seems to be, you know, um, difficult uh, really. It's looking, you know, pr relatively straightforward. Um, the weapon, uh, machine guns, or it's cannon, sorry, uh, on this, this can be, they're gonna be interesting too. A couple of small plugs basically there to go into the uh, front wing fairing. Uh, the surround around the cockpit uh, there as well. So, yeah, it's looking as, as pretty much as you'd expect an Eddard uh, instruction manual to uh, to look like. Uh, you might need to drill in if you're having the, um, the tractable step. You need to drill a hole for that, which is something that could be done later on. So that's not so much of an issue. So you can worry about that uh, a lot later on. The position that the undercarriage uh, should be in once uh, you put that into place. And then sort of the final sections where we're putting the, you know, the antenna on, the blades uh, go on, canopy, and also we've got the uh, call out for the uh, canopy masking on how that uh, is supposed to uh, go. So basically it's quite a simple one. So you've just got the surround uh, around the frame and then you'll need to either use masking tape or some liquid mask to fill in the bulk uh, of the canopy and some simple canopy masks for across the front uh, windscreen there as well. Of course, we're putting fuel tanks on if you want to put the fuel tanks on. Um, again, rockets, if you want to put those on or keep it as a clean uh, airframe. And then we move on to the uh, markings. Um, so obviously we've got the, uh, the box art one, uh, it's obviously front and foremost. Also, if you've never bought uh, an ADR kit, each um, marking will have a history of that particular marking, which is also really nice to have. Because um, again, you know, I've learned stuff from, from these information, so it's not something I'm usually over bothered by. Um, I'm just more interested in the, the aircraft and sort of the engineering part of it, but it's nice to know the history uh, of that aircraft and its squadron and you know uh, the pilots that flew it and any particular kills uh, made by the aircraft or the pilots uh, accolades and um, particularly with uh, the box art you know the pilot gets a DFC. So we've got a couple of colour schemes to choose from. I'm probably going to stick at the moment I'm still sticking with the uh, original uh, no, box art um, you know I, there's nothing particularly stand out anything about any of these markings that they're very nice um, but there's nothing you know overly exciting apart from probably the first one because it's got that uh, lightning bolt uh, type motif down the side but other than that they are pretty much the same though I do quite like this the red white and blue uh, on the nose uh, sorry, the nose, yeah, the nose cone uh, there as well. But everything's, you know, they're quite, they're all very much, um, very much alike. I suppose maybe you could go on the history of that particular uh, aircraft, maybe instead, you know, if that, uh, you know, you like the story of that, uh, the history of that aircraft, then go for that marking. But they're all pretty much generally the same. On the very back page, we've got the uh, decal uh, callouts for all the uh, stencils. So you're going to need to pay attention with this um, when it comes to decaling because you know some of these um, may need to go on before or after uh, some of the main markings. In most cases, it's going to be afterwards. Um, well, I think for the majority of this think actually it shouldn't be actually a problem because I don't think you have anything that actually overlaps anything else because the tail band you will have to paint yourself but everything else as I can see at present um, nothing really goes over anything else 
maybe that decal on the roundel. No, it misses the roundel. So you should be all right, actually. Um, so it won't make all much too much difference in what order you put them on. Uh, generally, I always like to do all these first because it's the more fiddly part and then do the main ones afterwards. But again, you know, just reference between your markings and these just in case, um, you know, that does happen. But generally, I think on this one in particular, you know, you won't have to worry too much about that at all. So we'll start with the clear sprue, uh, which has see our main cockpit um, canopy. Got the uh, gun sights and a few other bits. I have uh, some of the lighting for underneath and the wingtip lights. And that's all I can actually recognize of this sprue uh, at the moment. Yeah, so the gun sight, didn't yeah, the gun sight there as well. So again, nicely, it's always nice and clear, nicely done uh, through them. So you know, as always, top quality. The other set of clear parts, um, I assume they've done them like this because it must be. I'm assuming it's easier to mould in clear than it is made plastic. I, don't, I have no idea, if I'm completely honest. But these are the. Uh, drop tanks uh, for the kit again very they're very simple I mean there's just two teardrop shaped tanks there's nothing overly exciting uh, <laughs> about them so so we'll look at some of the uh, we'll look at small parts first and then we'll look at the main fuselage in a bit so a very simple um, very very that's actually quite old school looking um, engine detail basic engine detail but to be fair it does sit quite far back in the engine cowl so it may not be it's obviously not going to be seen uh, very uh, well you do have this part that will sit in the middle which is quite a long uh, tube cylinder part <laughs> and then we've got the propeller boss that will sit snugly uh, with that so we've got our front uh, engine uh, the cell cover there and again you know fantastic detail the little rivets in the ailerons there which are in two parts for some reason the exhaust stacks um, a lot of the time Z odds actually do uh, make the holes so they're, they're hollowed out but these aren't but I don't think you I'm not sure if how well I can't remember how well you see these out of the um, inside of the engine so I potentially depend how it works I might draw those out myself it's not too uh, difficult but you do have to be careful not to go too far and completely destroy them altogether again some more control surfacing the towel uh, planes there you've got because a couple of no, that's top and bottom sorry um, now these ones, these ailerons are a solid piece, as where well. the other ones on that last sprue were in two parts for some reason. Two different type, three different, or four different <laughs> propeller boss types all in all, uh, neither of which you will be using. Again, same with the uh, blades. Um, they're not in there, um, obviously it's for a different version, which I'm assuming they may do later on, uh, as it's on the sprue. We have... Uh, Cockpit surround, which again very nicely detailed. There, rudder there again, very sharp detail. You can see everything's going on in there. So the last two sprues, which are very small parts. Uh, this one, which has got our uh, wheels, which they've. Very nicely printed Dunlop wheels on, or just Dunlop, I should say. And again, two different types, different hub uh, versions. The rockets, which they've actually molded as one singular piece, so all you have to do is get rid of a very small uh, seam line, which is great because one of the one things they do is putting two round parts together and that's to try and get rid of the. Uh, you know the seam line there so those will be easier 
Um, whether I'm going to do the put these on or not, I haven't decided yet. Um, but we will see. Side wall frame in there, which is going to be very delicate, so you're going to be want to careful with that uh, cleaning uh, that part up as well. And then just a load of little bits and bobs. Um, so you got the different, you got the old. Uh, exhaust stacks there for when they had the massive radiator underneath the chin. Undercarriage, again, very nice sharp detail. Cockpit floor. Um, there you go, there you go. See, the, I can't, do you know what? I can't remember if they've actually done a earlier version with the, the chin uh, radiator on. Um, I will do, have to do a bit of research on that, I'm not 100% sure. Um, as you can see there, two of the different type panels. There's the detail one, which again is very sharply and nicely detailed. Um, and the one that's going to have uh, the uh, decals uh, on. I haven't actually seen, they usually do a plain one, so maybe the case of just sanding those edges out, uh, the, sorry, the raised parts out and, and putting your photo etched parts on uh, there. Okay, we've got the main instrument panel for the non-decal and decal version there. Again, some small the small components for the, the undercarriage there as well. So yeah, it's, it doesn't surprise me on the level of detail that's in this because this is, to me is very standard for uh, these guys. There's not much in the way of detail apart from some sort of framework in the cockpit area, but that's generally about it. But the level of detail on the outside is amazing. We've got all our um, rivet detail there, some of the panels um, as well, some of the venting uh, down the side for the exhaust and the heat down there. But again, there's always, you know, fantastic detail. I've got um, four um, EDR kits uh, on the go at the moment for a commission and are all of the exact same quality um, and they go together beautifully uh, with very, very few details. Uh, sorry, very, very fitting issues. Um, but these, wing, these wings are absolutely stunning. Um, the detail, the two's raised uh, humps for the um, the load uh, drum for the cannon and again just all that rivet detail which carries on uh, along the bottom the ejection slips there as well and then a little bit of detail in the wheel well there as well but again absolutely stunning detail it's beautiful um, you know it, it's just something you just come to expect um, with Eddard as well as you know fantastic fitting um, as well particularly around the uh, wing and fuselage area um, that's where I generally have fit, uh, fitting issues but those go together absolutely beautifully I know you've got to see this very well but those are the, the, the masking die, cost, die cut masking uh, so you've got the cockpit uh, down that side and the um, flash for down the one side. I don't think you're going to really see that um, very well um, at all there, but it's it's there. So obviously, just peel that off and just stick it down. Photo etch is one piece or one. I think it's, I suppose you still call them a sprue. And again, very nicely done. Um, what they've recently started doing with these is the. The glass in the um, instrument panel has got like a clear bit of, I don't know what it is, but a raised clear bit to give you that impression of you know, the instrument panel um, having glass in it. Again, some really nice detailed uh, printed belts. They've actually sort of put a bit of shade in there to show a bit of depth uh, into it. I usually do tend to put a, um, bit of um, enamel um, wash over that just to make it look a bit older but they look uh, really nice um, part of one of the sort of venting on top of the uh, engine cowl and the 
instruments there as well. So again, and pretty much as always, you know, some really good uh, detailing. If you've been following me for a while, you know I pretty much will always get an Eddard upgrade kit for uh, an aircraft, or actually or just in general. Um, if I can get one, particularly if it's from Eddard, I will get my hands on it because they generally are fantastic and, you know, great uh, added detail additions to your models. And last but no least, the uh, decals. So we've got the one, one for the uh, small detail uh, decaling and some of the, um, or a version of one of the other aircraft by the looks of it, which looks very similar to that one, but there we go. <laughs> no, it's a different one, so it is a different one. So yeah, so we've got one mark in there. Um, this is all the little stenciling there as well. Grip strip down the side, which I'll probably will paint. But yeah, um, again, so this is for the one with the thunder flash or whatever you want to call it down the side. Copper instrument detail again, which is also very nicely printed uh, on there as well. And there we go, just, just all the markings from underneath. Obviously, they're all cut for the. The uh, wheel bay, or sorry, the wheel or undercarriage doors. So we've got the main and the small, and then the rest of the the wing there. Of course, a couple of them have got uh, squadron badges uh, on the tail. So again, they're very uh, nicely printed there. Some wing and squadron leader markings, tail flashes, and obviously the randalls. What they've also done. Which I think this by look at this is the same. As you can see, it's got quite a glossy uh, finish and kind of looks a bit not very well printed. As I don't know, just what I've just said is that they are well printed, but as you can see, it doesn't look like it is because they've got some light sort of mottling. What Eddard have started to do, which is really nice, and you don't actually have to do this, but when you put your decal on, do it exactly the same as you would do. I mean, the way I do it is. Um, either a semi or gloss uh, finish before putting markings on again soak in water these don't take all that long pretty much as soon as they touch the water they come off um, put some microsol sorry micro set down slide these on you know smooth it out get all the water out let it go off put your micro set um, sorry put your microsol on leave it to dry particularly overnight and then with a bit of masking tape put it over your decal and very gently um, peel it back and what you should find is that there'll be a layer of film that will come off uh, with it leaving the actual decal you know set onto the model underneath and it gives an absolutely amazing uh, finish um, and it's this is again this is the same that's on um, some of the other ones uh, that I'm working on uh, for commission at the moment. Um, so you will be seeing them um, probably more coming after this video. Um, so I'm just doing a quick review on it for now and I will be doing this uh, relatively uh, soon. But hopefully I will be able to show you that um, in one of those videos. If not, it will be um, in this one. I may even do a completely separate video just just showing it not so much of a tutorial just just showing it uh, how it works so there we go that's the um that's the kit so um yeah we'll uh, we'll go back to me so there we go my friends as you can see the detail uh, on this kit as pretty much as it says is expected from Edard is absolutely amazing i'm really looking forward to getting stuck into this model um, I've got a few other kits uh, on the go, um, also Eddard ones, uh, which I'm doing as a uh, commission. So you'll be seeing quite a bit of Eddard stuff uh, coming out uh, in probably the next uh, few videos. Um, so yeah, so really looking forward to doing it. Hope you can join me uh, for that kit when I get round to it, which is, I'm going to hopefully is um, pretty much as soon as possible. So. Yeah, so stick around for that. 
Um, so if you haven't done so already and you, you know, you want to uh, keep up with what's going on, uh, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Of course, if you put bell notifications on as well. That will obviously tell you when the next video is out and available. And uh, just thank you, guys, uh, so much for watching. And I'll catch you again soon.